This tutorial podcast is sponsored by Creative Cow Magazine, the magazine for media professionals working in film, audio, video, motion graphics, imaging, and design. Subscribe to the free Creative Cow Magazine at www.creativecowmagazine.net. Hey, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for CreativeCow.net. Probably the most powerful feature in After Effects is expressions, but did you know that there are certain effects designed only for use with expressions? I'm willing to bet that you probably went diving through the effects menu at one time or another and came across a category called expression controls. Maybe you even tried to apply one of the expression control effects to a layer, but then you couldn't figure out what it did. If you're like most After Effects users, you've probably avoided that entire category since then, and maybe even pretended it didn't exist. Well, despite your denial, that category is there, and it's not going anywhere, so rather than ignoring it, why don't we see if there's anything useful in there that we can use in the work that we do. If you're not clear on what an expression control is, don't worry, all will be revealed in a few moments. Okay, so here I am in a composition with a bunch of ovals moving around randomly. But what if, despite their random position, I want them all to rotate together in sync? We could do it manually, adding keyframes to every layer. But what if we have to make a change? Then we need to change every layer. Wouldn't it be great if we could control the rotation for all layers at once? Well, we have an expression control for just that. However, before we do anything, let's add a new null object to the composition by choosing Layer, New, Null Object. The reason we're adding a null is that null objects are a great place to store expression controls because they aren't visible, and they're easy to locate in the composition. Now don't get me wrong, you can add expression controls to any layer, but if that layer is animated, and it probably is if it's in your composition, that means you have to go diving through a bunch of animation keyframes and effects to get to your expression controller. With a null object that isn't animated and isn't visible, your expression controllers are easily accessible with no extraneous animation keyframes or effects to deal with. I'll talk more about nulls in another tutorial. In the timeline, I'll select the null and hit enter to rename it to something like rotation control. Now, you don't have to rename it, but it certainly helps in identifying the layer that you're using as your controller, especially if you have more than one null object in your composition. Anyway, with the null still selected, I'll choose Effect, Expression Controls, Angle Control. If you look in the Effects palette, you'll see that a new control has been added. It looks like a dial with values for degrees and rotations. You're probably familiar with this type of control from many of the effects found in After Effects. For example, Fractal Noise uses this system of degrees and rotation to animate the effect's fractal evolution and a drop shadow effect uses the same system for shadow direction. In addition, our basic rotation transform uses the same system of degrees and rotation even though it doesn't have a controller that looks like this. The point is that almost every effect or property that uses this system and is animatable can use this dial if it's set up properly. Right now it's not, so if you rotate this dial, nothing happens. The reason is that this control, like all expression controls, is the equivalent of a light switch. When you bring home a light switch from the hardware store, it's still pretty useless. Even if you hang it up on the wall and it looks right, it's still not going to turn on your lights until you've wired it properly. So what we need to do is some basic wiring here. And by basic wiring, I mean we need to use an expression to connect our controller to some animatable property, in this case, our red oval's rotation values. So I'll select one of my red solids and hit R to reveal the rotation property. Then I'll reselect my rotation control null object and hit E to reveal all effects, which in this case is just my expression control. I'll twirl it down to reveal the angle property. Next, on the red solid layer, Alt click or if you're on a Macintosh, Option click on the rotation keyframe stopwatch to add an expression and with the expression text still selected, use the expression pick whip to select the angle controls angle property. As you can see, the expression updates to what essentially means the value for this property comes from another property called angle, which is a property of the effect called angle control, which is found on the layer called rotation control, which is found here in this composition. 
This is basically a roadmap to allow After Effects to properly direct the information from our expression controller into our layer's rotation value. Looked at another way, it's like building several connections in an electrical pathway, which brings us right back to our light switch metaphor. Hit enter on your number pad to confirm the expression. And now that we've got things connected, as I rotate this angle dial in the effects palette, you can see that our red oval layer rotates as well. I can quickly add the same expression to every layer here by selecting the rotation property of our current layer and choosing Edit, Copy and then selecting every other layer and choosing Edit, Paste. Copying and pasting properties brings expressions along for the ride as well. So if I rotate the dial now, all the layers rotate together. So that's one layer controlling many. And of course you can set keyframes for the angle control as you normally would, creating animation for all layers from the one expression controller. Okay, but let's not stop here. You know how you can have one light switch control several lights? Well, you can have one expression control controlling many properties. So let's select one of our red ovals and choose Effect, Color Correction, Hue, and Saturation. In the Effects panel, I'll turn on the Colorize property and then set the Colorize Saturation property value up to 100. You may have noticed that the Colorize Hue property also uses values based on degrees and rotations. So, Alt-click or if you're on a Macintosh, Option-click on the Colorize Hue property stopwatch which adds an expression in the timeline. Again, let's use our Pick Whip to tell this property to get its values from the Angle Controller. Hit Enter to confirm the expression. Now, if I scrub through time, I can see my layer changing color as it rotates. Again, it's a simple matter to copy and paste the effect and expressions to each layer. And just because I did it this way, don't think that you're limited to one controller per layer. You can add as many expression controls as you like. Haven't you ever had two or three light switches next to each other on the same wall? By adding several controllers to one null object, you can turn it into a veritable control panel for your composition. Now, do you need expression controls to do any of what we've done here? Of course not. You can animate every single property individually by hand. But why would you want to? And as you'll soon see, there are some cases where you can't do certain things without expression controllers. There are five others, by the way, and we'll cover them in part two and three of this tutorial. Don't forget, you can get the files for this and other podcasts at www.creativecow.net forward slash AEPodcast. Once again, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for creativecow.net.